What is up guys under here and now I'm back with a NXT TakeOver New York preview slash prediction so yes I'm going to do it Um, I've got a little bit of time today so we're going to get this done and I imagine it'll be either Wednesday or the very latest Thursday I'll be doing Wrestlemania preview slash prediction I'm actually planning something for that video so keep an eye out for that it's, it's going to be this is, this is going to be a test, see how it works, but, but I'll explain later on. But before that, um, before WrestleMania 35, WrestleMania weekend kicks off this Friday night with NXT TakeOver New York. And this should be an awesome show, guys. I mean, let's be honest. I could tell, I could tell you that this TakeOver is going to be awesome, but it's kind of like state of the obvious. I mean, you pretty much already know that, don't you, really? Um, you don't really need me to tell you it's going to be great. You know what it is, I mean, pretty much every time NXT is at least great, for the most part it's usually awesome, I mean, they just are, I mean, and not being an NXT mark or anything like that, but it is objectively, for the most part, the takeovers are awesome, and this year should be no different, and we've got five matches there uh, this uh, time, five title matches as well, so let's get to it, um, so yeah, overall, high expectations for this show as per, um, see a lot of people say this show could be as good as TakeOver New Orleans, or even better. I don't know about that, I mean, I just feel like TakeOver New Orleans was a special show that, um, that very rarely we get shows of that standard, so it doesn't really need to try and top TakeOver New Orleans, that's going to be a hell of a task. As long as it's a great show, that's all I really care about. Um, so yeah, we, we'll start off with the women's match, a fatal four-way match for the NXT Women's Championship. Shayna Baszler taking on Bianca Belair, Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai. Heard a couple of whispers this might be turned into a ladder match, but of course that hasn't been confirmed yet. So uh, after this week's NXT, this might be a ladder match, who knows. Um, but for me, this is definitely the match I'm least hyped for on the card. Um, I feel like the NXT Women's Division has been kind of eh over the last few months. As a matter of fact, I would easily say it. One of the few things the main roster does better than NXT, and that's the women's division. I just feel it's just kind of stagnant and just not terrible or anything, but hasn't really set the world on fire at all, to be honest. Um, I think the Shane and Kyrie feud was good, but then that kind of fizzled out, and then obviously now we've got Shane and the other four horsewomen. Uh, then we had the Shane and Bianca Belair thing, and that was all right, but not great. Didn't really set the world on fire, anything like that. So I guess they just took the girl, the four girls he had, thrown them together, put them on the card in a fatal four way. And don't get me wrong, the match should be good. Uh, it probably will be at least good. I won't say it'll, pro it'll probably be the worst match of the night, but that's not saying anything at all because I think even the worst match of the night will still be three three and a quarter three and a half star match that kind of range um so yeah shane has been around for a while now she caused two-time nxt women's champion won the nxt women's championship there uh, take over last year in new orleans and she's just i mean she's just come on so much i mean a lot of people don't like her she thinks she's boring but she's a good wrestler she's a very good wrestler um oh, i think she's a much better promo than she is a wrestler but um like Ronda Rousey with the MMA background has that believability factor. And I think she'll do well when she goes up. Um, Kyrie Sane, another one, been around for a while. Um, Io Shirai, she's starting to find her feet now um, after competing in last year's May Young Classic. And then Bianca Belair is the one of the potential. I feel like uh, she's much better promo than she's a wrestler. She's getting better and better as a wrestler every day, but I think a real strength is a character in a promo work and i think she can do quite well for herself for the main roster when she eventually gets there um so i think it should be a good match don't think it'll be a great match but i think it'll be at least good in his prediction i'm gonna go with eo shirai to go over because um i feel like shane has had a time shane will probably be going well i won't say for sure but i mean she'll likely be going up the main roster after wrestlemania because, yeah, I like to say, I mean, she's been at NXT for, like, nearly two years now, so I feel like she's probably ready to go up. Uh, Kyrie Sane, I don't really want to see her have the title back, because I mean, she's, she already, she had a, she had a run off and she needs it again. Um, and Bianca Belair, I just don't think it's her time yet. I think, eventually, she will become the NXT Women's Champion, maybe, 
SummerSlam weekend, maybe that could be the time for her. So I think right now, I think I'll give it to Io Shirai, uh, continue with development. And um, this is a match I really want to see to take over in the future. I want to see Io Shirai versus Kairi Sane one on one on a takeover. Take over. I would have loved it for this year. Uh, this takeover, they take over San Francisco in June would be great for that one. So yeah, we're gonna go uh, Io Shirai to go over, and then we're going from the women's division to the NXT UK brand and the uh, WWE United Kingdom Championship. Pete Dunne versus Walter, and holy fucking shit, this could be great. Um. Gonna admit it, I've not really followed the NXT UK brand as much as I should. Um, yeah, because I think there's just a lot of uh, wrestling out there at the moment of um, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, 205 Live, um, other brands. Because uh, in recent weeks, I've been, I was spending a lot of my free time watching the New Japan Cup. So, I've kind of neglected the NXT UK brand. I just haven't really got into it. Um uh, I know it's, de- it's in its d- developmental stages, so you think it will get better in time. But for me, I feel like you, you get good wrestler matches on there, but there's not really that many great storylines to follow or anything like that. Um, but I, I have confidence it will get better. Um, but I am glad it's being represented on this takeover. I guess um, there's not going to be another NXT UK uh, uh, takeover anytime. So they did obviously the one in Blackpool in January. If I had to guess, they'll probably do one in Royal Albert Hall in the summer again, but I, I don't know that for a fact or anything. So, they've given the takeover spot to this match here, and then, this should be a great match. I mean, Pete Dunne, do I need to say much more about him? Absolutely awesome. Been the NXT UK champion since uh, TakeOver Chicago back in 2017. So, almost two years as champion in that time. Had an incredible run, to be fair. I mean, so many great title defences against Trent Seven, Tyler Bate, Jordan Devlin, Noam Dar, um, Joe Coffey. And I'm sure there's I mean, regular NXT. I think he's uh, defending against like of Roderick Strong, Kyle O'Reilly. Um, I'm sure there's more that I can think of. Uh, oh, him and Ricochet when they, um, they had the North America versus uh, WWE UK title match. And then... So stuff like that, really. I mean, Pete Dunne, for me, the best young wrestler in the world right now. I mean, I, I could put him over so much. I love the guy. Um, and then he's really, I think he really found his match. So highly regarded um, indie star Walter, a uh, big star in the UK, the European scene, in stuff like Progress, OTT, uh, Defiant Wrestling, that sort of thing. Was finally signed to WWE in January and made his debut at the end of... Uh, uh, take over black but I think at that point it was obvious he was going to all right into a feud of Pete Dunne for the NXT UK title and that's what they've done that is what they've done I mean obviously Walter the big man the, just great great big man work I mean if you haven't seen some of Walter's work that um, you really need to check him out I mean he is probably one of the best worker big men in the business right now and this match could be great this could be a potential show stealer I mean I really do think that I mean should be a great story of uh, Dunn just chopping the shit out of Walter. Uh, Pete Dunn trying to technically wrestle the big man, take him down, break his bones, that sort of thing. Um, so I think it should be an exciting match. I really do. Um, and as far as the prediction, I'll go... I think, it's, I think we've got to get a new champion here. I think Walter to beat Pete Dunn to become the new United Kingdom champion. Uh, really? Because I think Pete Dunn's had his run. I mean, he's had as great runs as he has. I think it is time for him to drop a title. Because it's really after Walter, who the hell else has left uh, Pete Dunne to defend the title against, you know, after nearly two years. Um, I just think putting the title on Walter will help freshen up the NXT UK brand. Because then all the people that's challenged Pete Dunne over the last Pete day or two years can then start challenging Walter. So that you've got fresh matches like Tyler Bate, Trent Seven. Jordan Devlin's a big one for me, I um, because I have heard uh, the OTT Scrapper Mania 5 match between these two is amazing. I mean, is there anyone watching this video seen seeing that match? Um, anyone want to tell me if it's worth seeking out or not? Because I was going to watch it, but I've just been a big fat lazy ass basically, and I haven't watched it. But I have heard it was absolutely awesome. Um, then you got guys like Joe Coffey, Dave Mastiff, um, Wolfgang. Plenty, so you got basically you got plenty of guys that can challenge Walter for the next... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months. However long he wants to be the champion for. Um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna go with another new champion and then match number three. And I think this I think this match will be the opener for me anyway. And that uh for the NXT tag team titles, War Raiders versus uh Dusty Rose 2019 classic winners uh Alistair Black and Ricochet. So this could be an interesting WrestleMania weekend for those guys because um Tonight on Raw, they're going to be facing Revival for the Raw Tag Team titles. And who knows, we might get a screw finish and they might get a spot on the WrestleMania card against Revival. So, conceivably, by the end of this week, uh, Alice Black and Ricochet could be the Raw Tag Team Champions, the NXT Tag Team Champions. Um, but I doubt they will. So, obviously, yeah, so we've got Ricochet and Black. Um, they were two single stars for the most part of 2018. And I guess they were in a position where they had... Nothing going on in singles competition. So they put so they put them together for the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic. Um, they teamed up quite regularly on Raw over the last couple of months. And they've done, they've done all right for themselves as a team. I think they have been a good tag team, yeah. But I think ultimately both guys need to be singles guys to me anyway. Especially on the main roster. Because um, I think after this they definitely will be leaving NXT after this show. Um, so... And then they won the 2019 Dusty Rose Tag Team Classics. And the prize for that is a tag team title shot against Hanson and Raw, the War Raiders. Um, so, I'm so glad the War Raiders, the NXT Tag Team Champions, they beat the Undisputed Era at uh, Rural Weekend. Take over Phoenix. Well, the thing about that one there, yeah, take over Phoenix. So, after it, so they've been in NXT for about a year now. I think they debuted right after WrestleMania last year. Uh, obviously they were a big tag team in, in the scenes for a couple of years in New Japan and Ring of Honor most notably former Ring of Honor tag champions former IWGP tag team champions so it's only natural now that the NXT tag team champions a great team for my opinion the War Raiders aka War Machine they've got two hard working big men I think um, out of the two I think Hanson's definitely bet the better of the two and if they ever split up or anything like that, I would probably say Hanson's probably the one who would uh, get the big push in WWE. Um, so I think this, this should be a fantastic match as well. Uh, definitely say it's been around the four-star range. Uh, like I say, I think this should definitely open up the show. I think it'd be a great way to open up the show for Bang. I mean, look at the last few takeovers. I think they've been great because the Undisputed Era Tag Team title defences has been uh, opening up the shows. And to be fair, because of the five-match five, uh, five uh, match card uh, uh, dispute era, it's definitely notably absent from this takeover. Maybe they'll have a match on a, have a dark match and that be taped for NXT television. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's been announced at press time. The, the what I've been when I'm, as I'm talking. But yeah, I think this should be a fantastic big man little team match. Obviously, you got the the power of the War Raiders there. Striking ability of Alistair Black and just the straight up high flying stuff from Ricochet, so it should be a good match. Really, I think every match on this show should be at least good, and this should be a great match. Um, far to prediction, I'm gonna go with uh, War Raiders to retain the NXT tag team titles because, like I say, I do think this will be it for Alistair Black and Ricochet on NXT because he have been on the main roster for a, about a couple of months now, and I just feel like, yeah, full time they'll go. Whether they'll be a tag team, whether they'll be singles, I don't know. Obviously, I think that's going to be decided in the Superstar shake-up when that happens, what will happen there. And then the War Raiders onwards and upwards, but I do feel like they really do need some new challenges. Uh, I feel like someone like the Forgotten Sons or the Street Profits uh, should be the next challenge. I imagine the Forgotten Sons will probably be the next in line to feud with them. Or maybe they'll go with only Lockin and Danny Burch. That'd be actually quite cool, to be fair. I think that would actually be a really good match, but whatever. And then uh, we've got for the NXT North American Championship, Matt Riddle versus Velveteen Dream. Um, I don't think this will be a show stealer, because obviously I think the main event will be amazing. Uh, but I think this should be a great match, of course. I mean, first time meeting between these two, if I'm not mistaken. You know, really, just a big chance to have a big match here. So Velveteen Dream, I can't put this guy over enough. I feel like, Bar as the young guys on NXT is definitely the most obvious prospect for stardom in WWE. As a matter of fact, I'll say if in three to five years, in three years' time, give it three years, if Velveteen Dream's not one of the top, top guys in WWE, something is seriously wrong because this guy just gets it. I mean, he's improved so much as a wrestler, but I think charisma, character-wise, is just 
knocks it out of the park every single time. And ultimately, I think that's why he'll be successful. Because you see a lot of these indie wrestlers that come in, the fantastic in-ring performers, sure. But a lot of them just aren't very charismatic and not very good on the microphone. Um, but this guy seems to have more of WWE entertainment qualities. Because he's a, got a decent size as well, has a good body, youth, promos. And like I say, his in-ring work has definitely come on over the last year. I mean, he's like, what is he, 24 now? Somewhere like that, 23, 24. So this guy should be, he should be a star. I mean, he's been a star in NXT, and uh, uh, that's uh, evidenced by the fact he's now the North American champion, and um, beating Johnny Gargano, uh, I think it was February. I can't remember the exact date, but it was, obviously it was after TakeOver Phoenix. Not too long, I think it was like two weeks after TakeOver Phoenix. Maybe three weeks, I'm not certain. Um, so this is his first big title defence against Matt Riddle, who um, I think Matt Riddle's going to really benefit on NXT with him. Um, obviously Gargano and Ricochet going in. Well, Gargano and Black, and probably Gargano as well. So NXT is going to need a top baby face, and I feel like Matt Riddle's going to fill that role now, because um, he's good. I mean, I'm not too crazy on the whole bro thing. I just feel like, ugh, that's kind of annoying. I would really like him to tone it down, but I think... Again, this guy is a really big prospect. If WWE, WWE don't fuck him up, he could be a really big star on the main roster. Because he's got this kind of coolness factor behind him. Kind of reminds me a lot of Rob Van Dam with his cool laid-back attitude. But I think the fans will like him. I mean, obviously, his uh, in-ring skills don't really, really good. I'm going to get better. Uh, the legitimate MMA background, so the believability factor. He's got a great body. Not the biggest guy in the world, but I think he's far from small. I think he's like 215 pounds, uh, probably about 5'10", 5'11". So, by current standards, he's probably size probably isn't going to hold him back as much as it would have done like 15, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Um, so, hopefully, let's just hope, I think that's a hope for me. Let's just hope and see what happens to Matt Riddle. Um it's build up the build up match has been fine, it's not been anything great or anything. Matt Riddle got a title shot because he had a uh, in the field five way match he had a Velveteen Dream the broad mission, it looks like he's gonna tap him out. And then it got broke up. So Regal's made this match. Um yeah, I've I've got this should be an excellent match to be fair. I mean the real big chance of Matt Riddle to have that breakout performance on NXT because so far he had the fear of Cassius Ono and those were good matches, but I don't think they were great matches. And then he had a really enjoyable one with Drew Gulak not that long ago on NXT TV. But I think in an environment like this against a guy like Velveteen Dream, which I think this match is probably going to get 18, 20 minutes, maybe more. So this match should be a great match. And so far as a prediction, I'm going to go with Velveteen Dream to retain the NXT North American title. Because um, I feel like Matt Riddle could go towards the NXT title late this year. And obviously... With Ricochet dropping the belt to Johnny Gargano and then Gargano dropping the Velveteen Dream. I don't see the Velveteen Dream dropping the NXT North American title this soon, so I'm going to go off and retain, and then it'll be interesting to see who he feuds with after this, actually. Um, I'm not real sure. And then the main event for the NXT Championship, two out of three falls for the vacant NXT Championship, Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole, so. Of course, this wasn't the original plan. Of course, what was going to happen? And we were going to get um, we were going to get the final blow off. We were going to get a uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano one last time, uh, uh, over one year in the making after the, the main event to take over New Orleans last year. And of course, that goes all the way back to Ciampa turn on Gargano originally and take over Chicago 2017. But sometimes uh, life gives you a big slap in the face. Uh, that match can't happen now because Tommaso Ciampa suffered a major neck injury, had neck surgery, vacated the NXT title. Oh, that's just so disappointing because obviously it came off the back of Gargano finally t- uh, showing his hand and turning on Ciampa on NXT. So, fuck. So, the pit off is going to be epic, I feel. I feel like we've missed out on a real classic here because I honestly think like this match could have been at least as good, if not better, than take over New Orleans last year, with it being the final bluff and having all this history and all this story behind it. So it's just sad, really. And you got to feel for, for Matt or Champa, who 
got to say, for the last year or so, the best heel in professional wrestling, bar none, in my opinion, bar none. I mean, because obviously this era is kind of harder for heels to get proper heat because the fans know the score now. The fact that they, they know it's not real anymore, so it's harder for them to get genuine heel heat. Um, but Tommaso Ciampa did that. I mean, his character was awful. Just a bad person, despicable piece of shit. Um, yeah, ah. Uh, and his NXT title run was really, really good. Um, it was really just going from strength to strength, really. I mean, great promos, great matches. The full works, the Maso Champa. And, oh, God, I just can't understand how awesome I think Gargano Champa in the show would have been. And it's just so sad, really, that it's not going to happen. But, so, and with Gargano Champa, he's probably going to be out a long time as well. I mean, neck injuries are usually nine months to a year, so I hope it doesn't fuck Champa's career up. I really don't. And hopefully he can come back and be as good as ever. But who knows? I mean, we don't know that, do we? Um, but one man's uh, loss is another man's gain. So with that in mind, uh, Triple H decided Johnny Gargano was going to be in the main event of this takeover. And then we're going to have a fatal five-way match to... Uh, to determine his opponent, and he picked Adam Cole, and I'll probably say under the circumstances, that's probably the right choice, that's probably, when I, that's probably the guy I would have picked the main event this takeover as well, so, this is the first time matching NXT, uh, between two guys that have both been in the roster for quite a long time, and it's probably happened on the independent scene before, but I don't know that, so, maybe there's some independent fans who have a lot more knowledge of indie scene than I do, they could maybe tell me, how's Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole happened on a high-profile indie show before? And maybe has, maybe has I don't know. But as far as NXT, a first-time match, because um, both guys have been in the main roster since TakeOver Brooklyn 3 in 2017. So, at least it's a fresh match. Um, so that's one thing. you got a great baby face in Gargano, and a great heel in Adam Cole, so just let them go, I would say. This match could be the best match of WrestleMania weekend. Uh, me, personally, I think the best match in WrestleMania weekend is going to be Naito versus the Bush in uh, G1 Supercard. But uh, taking WrestleMania and NXT TakeOver into account, I think this is probably the match to watch. Two out of three falls. Uh, it should be just a fantastic wrestling match. Um, did like the promo last week on NXT with uh, the face-to-face of Gargano and Adam Cole. And that's the thing, a lot. Johnny Gargano's actually pretty damn good on the microphone. I um, feel like a lot of uh, non-NXT fans are going to think he's a van- call him a vanilla midget and stuff like that, but no, Johnny Gargano actually can cut a really good promo. Um, I think he's definitely better than a lot of uh, guys on the independent scene, their mic skills. Although I do think his time in NXT has improved him in that regard. Um, Adam Cole, of course, I think he's a really good talker. I mean, Adam Cole... Kind of has the tools to be a main event star, except one thing, he's undersized. I mean, if you know, Adam Cole was 6'1", 6'2", 230 pounds, he'd be definitely a guaranteed main event in WWE, because he's pretty good in the ring, he's really good in the microphone, but I feel like a guy like Adam Cole's going to have to work a lot harder when he goes on the main roster to impress Vince. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, I think, I think it's shit, but that's just the way it is. Um, did a great line about uh, talking about Johnny Gargano's takeover matches and yeah how awesome they were but for the most part Johnny Gargano lost most of those matches so he killed a great line called him Johnny Participation I thought that was an awesome line and Adam Cole like, lists off his accomplishments such as um, laying out Drew McIntyre at takeover winning the first War Games match at takeover becoming the first North American champion at uh, takeover as well so uh, clearly because of um, Tommaso Ciampa's injury, they haven't really had time to build up a storyline between these two guys. So they're really just having to sell us on the fact this is going to be a great match. So you got to give them a bit of benefit of the doubt in that regard because obviously they didn't, they couldn't really count for uh, Tommaso Ciampa getting injured. So I think under the circumstances, the best thing they could have come up with. Um, so I think like, this will probably be getting the 30, 35 minute tray tree, maybe even longer with it being a two out three falls match. Who knows? Maybe they could go like 40, 50 minutes. I don't know. I mean, it's on the WWE Network, so they don't have pay-to-view restrictions on them or anything. So they could pretty much go as long as you wanted, if really, to be fair. Um, yeah, I just think this would be a fantastic match. I feel like both guys will bring it. 
we'll have an outstanding matchup. Um, really looking forward to this one. And as far as prediction, prediction, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Adam Cole to take the NXT title. Um, one because I did see an advertisement recently that advertised the match. Um, I think it was the NXT house show or something that advertised the match between NXT champion Adam Cole versus North American champion Velveteen Dream. And I would love Johnny Gargano to get his NXT title reign. And, and if I, if it was up to me, that's what I would do. But what I think going to Because I think Gargano probably going to the main roster after WrestleMania. I mean, he was there for a bit. But I think uh, with Tommaso Champ again, injury that knocking up plans there. Uh, I'm not sure what the plans were, but I think it definitely revolved around Champer and DIY. Um, so I do think Gargano will come up with the main roster full-time after WrestleMania. I don't really want him to go up with the main roster after WrestleMania, but it's probably going to happen, isn't it? Um, and this isn't really the time and the place to discuss Johnny Gargano's prospects or lack thereof on the main roster. Um, I just feel like having a chill champion like Adam Cole could... Because Adam, Adam Cole would probably be a good NXT champion. I mean, he's been around a while now, and I think he deserved it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have Adam Cole become the new NXT champion by beating Johnny Gargano in a total free falls match. And that should be it. I mean, like I said in the intro, this should be a fantastic show. Really looking forward to this one. Don't forget, guys, it's Friday night, not Saturday this year, because uh, they're doing Friday NXT, uh, Saturday Hall of Fame, Sunday WrestleMania. Um, so that's a wrap, guys. So thanks for watching. Um, Wednesday off, uh, probably I'll say probably Wednesday, but the very latest Thursday, we're going to do a WrestleMania uh, 35 pre pre previous predictions. And that's a wrap, guys. And until next time, peace.